hello friends i welcome you to my youtube channel back pm so in this video we will study uh, eccentrically loaded riveted joint okay so you can see the joint system so in this video we will not solve any problem but we will derive formula how to solve this problem okay so we will develop relations and formulas for the eccentrically loaded riveted joint so let's read the problem so what is eccentricity see this e is eccentricity of load and p is load so there are you can see in this system there are four rivets so we have uh, considered this point as origin okay and this is x axis and this is y axis okay so suppose for this rivet this is rivet number 1 2 3 4 okay so for this rivet suppose its cent uh, centroid is x1 y1 and this is x2 y2 for this it is x3 y3 and for this it is x4 y4 so these are the centroids of the rivets from origin this is origin okay so and suppose centroid of whole system all these four rivets centroid is at this g point then distance of g is x bar and y bar means we are supposing that centroid of the whole system is x bar y bar okay so x bar and y bar centroid or center center of gravity of all four rivets or system okay and x1 x2 x3 and x4 these are distance center of rivets from oy okay from this line from this line distance is this distance is x4 this is x1 this is x2 similarly and uh, y1 y2 y3 y4 it is here distances of center of center of rivets from ox okay so that's why x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 and x4 y4 are cent center of gravity of four rivets so now this you can see that load p is applied here okay and its eccentricity of load is e so this load will be taken by this it will be shared by four rivets okay so we will again let's draw these rivets these are the four rivets this is their centroid this is their particular centroids or center of gravity this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is rivet number 4 okay so if we try to transfer this load p from here to center of gravity of this whole system okay so if we try to transfer load p here if we load to load p here then it will become a load p and so it will become p load will be transferred here plus a moment of p into e see it will try to bend it like this so it is a clockwise moment p e. so a moment p e will also be transferred here so this is the simple shear load okay so it will be divided between all the four uh, all four rivets so it will become 
p by 4 okay or total load p divided by number of rivets n so it will become p by 4 so here uh, at all rivets there will be a load of p by 4 p by 4 p by 4 and p by 4 okay second thing that at we already discussed this is x x bar y bar okay so as we discussed x bar will be equal to suppose area of the rivets is a1 a2 a3 a4 cross sectional area of each rivet so this is a1 because this is first rivet this is a2 this is a3 this is a4 so x x bar will be a1 x1 that's how we find centroid or center of gravity a2 x2 plus a3 x3 plus a4 x4 divided by a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 but here we assume that rivets all rivets are of same size then a1 a2 a3 a4 will be same so it will be cancelled out so it will become sorry this is a plus a plus a plus a is equal to 4a so it will become x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 divided by this is a plus a plus a plus a 4a so a will be cancelled and 4 will remain okay and y bar will become so we are considering four number of rivets here but if you consider n number of rivets then in case of four it will become n okay so y will become y1 plus y2 plus y3 plus y4 divided by 4 okay so this is y bar and suppose this is n number of rivets then it will become it will go on and this value will become n and this will go on so this will become up to y n and this will become n if it is this is n number of rivets and in case of 4 it will become n p by n p by n p by n so let's consider general case so p by n okay and this moment pe there is a movement pe which will be registered by these four loads uh, four rivets okay so we will co uh, connect the centers of all the rivets from here if we connect this then these are the four loads already acting here then there will be two assumptions that suppose uh, at this point distance means uh, shear stress taken by each rivet is proportional to distance from the centroid or center of gravity of the load so suppose this uh, load due to this moment pe is equal to f1 f2 f3 f1 f2 f3 f4 and fn is the secondary shear due to moment pe then and l1 l2 suppose this is distance l1 this is l2 this is l3 this is l4 so what is l1 l1 is distance of center of gravity of whole system from center of gravity of a1 okay so similarly l1 l2 l3 ln are distances perpendicular distances from or radial sorry radial distances from system center of gravity of system to 
center of gravity of respect to rivet okay then this force f1 the force f1 on this suppose the all the forces are acting perpendicular to this okay so f1 will act like this f1 then here f2 will be perpendicular to radial distance f3 will be perpendicular to this so this is f3 this is f4 okay this load will this load will act perpendicular to the radial distances sorry f1 was not here but f1 will be here because this is clockwise because moment was acting clockwise okay so p by n was the initial shear primary shear load now f1 is proportional to l1 f2 is proportional to l2 and so on means load uh, this shear force is proportional to distance from the center of gravity okay so in this case f1 by l1 is equal to f2 by l2 is equal to f3 by l3 is equal to fn by ln okay so you can see that f2 from here f2 is equal to f1 l2 by l1 f3 is equal to f1 by l1 into l3 and so on so these all the moments their sum will be equal to pe so pe will be equal to these are the forces f1 f2 and l1 l2 l3 the distance so their moment will be f1 l1 plus f2 l2 plus f3 l3 plus f4 l4 plus fn ln okay so if you put the value of f1 l1 plus if put the value of f2 then f2 is f1 l1 f1 l2 divided by l1 and this was again l2 plus f3 is f1 by l1 into l3 into this l3 plus like this so pe will become if we take f1 common f1 by l1 if we take f1 by l1 common then it will become f l1 square plus l2 square plus l3 square plus and so on and it will become ln square so there is this is equal to p okay so from here you can calculate f1 and if you find f1 then you can calculate can calculate f2 then you can calculate f3 and so on okay so if you calculate all the forces secondary shear forces due to moment pe then you have got the well values here so if you draw it again these four rivets okay so this is the center of gravity this is radial distances so original initial shear force primary shear force is p by n equal on the equal on on the shear all the rivets p by n then secondary shear force will be equal to f1 perpendicular to this f1 this is f2 this is f3 this is f4 okay so from here you can calculate the resultant of these two forces from parallelogram theorem so it will be 
R1 for this you can calculate R2 similarly you can calculate R3 and R4 Okay, so from here you can calculate resultant forces on each rivet which will be equal to if you remember the formula of resultant force of two forces is equal to PS PS is support primary force then plus F square secondary shear force plus 2 PS and FS F into cos theta where theta is angle between the two forces this is theta So if you calculate the maximum shear stress, suppose R, you will notice the maximum R, maximum resultant force, then you will equate it, it is with pi by 4 into d square area into maximum allowable shear stress. So from here you can find the diameter of the rivet. Okay, so from here you can find the diameter of the rivet and you can design the all the rivets and joint. Okay. So I hope you understood this problem. So in next video we will solve the numerical problem based on this. So you can have better understanding. Okay. So thank you for watching this video.